theme of this meeting is prevention of HIV and that it is a major global priority. Treatment is prevention, microbicides, pre-exposure prophylaxis, voluntary male circumcision, and preventing mother-to-child transmission are all key components to the overall prevention portfolio. But pro should a preventive vaccine be developed, it will become the most powerful preventive tool and the cornerstone of an integrated preventive program. I've been working on an HIV vaccine since 1985, and it's taken these 27 years for myself and the field to recognize that the complex biology of HIV, the escape mechanisms of the virus from broad neutralizing antibody induction, and the very unusual traits of the very antibodies that we want to induce when they are induced, are necessitating completely new strategies of vaccine design that have not been used for vaccines to date. We need to close new infections in women. We need to make sure we reduce unmet need uh, for family planning in HIV positive women and women overall. And we also need to identify those women that are already infected, give them drugs, antiretroviral drugs, 90% of them, and reduce HIV transmission to less than 5%. And more importantly, we need to make sure that we provide ART to 90% of pregnant women in need of ART for their own health. WHO now has come up with the third option, which is option B+, which is about giving triple therapy to all pregnant women, regardless of CD4, for life. We need to make sure that we're treating those that are infected, we are identifying them and treating them. We need to be comfortable with young MS MSMs, we need to be comfortable with young female sex workers, we need to be comfortable with young IDUs and make sure that they have access to services to actually protect them from getting infected. And finally, uh, the, uh, the circumcision agenda for me is something we have to do and we must do. To turn the tide on behalf of women, we must do. We must accurately count all women in all of our diversity into research. We cannot no longer satisfy for being a count of less than 10 or maybe even 10% in anything that you want to do, that you want us to be a part of. We must turn a tide and we are me you must meaningfully involve women at all levels of authority within the government, within our local communities, within organizational, as we are expanding services and opportunities for women, we need to be able to put women in a position of leadership and authority within the titles that they serve. We're not asking just for male-ran organizations that will tolerate a women's program. We want women to have the tools to follow the research for us, by us, with us. It's time to turn the tide at our national strategies, including the U.S. strategy on AIDS that President Obama signed in two years ago. It's not enough to vaguely include us into the work. We're more than 50% of the epidemic, nothing taken away from the gentleman on this plenary. But I will hope in Australia we have a plenary all to ourselves, all about women, acknowledging we are in this fight. There is complexities that go along with what's happening in our lives. The underlying factors that deter girls from accessing and utilizing prevention strategies and increase their vulnerability to HIV include lack of access to information and commodities due to preconceived notions about adolescent sexual activity, social norms that support child marriage, condone violence against girls and women, and cast girls in subservient roles in society, and economic barriers to girls' education, and a false sense of security or empowerment that motivates adolescent girls to exchange sex for goods or favors. These are just symptoms of the double jeopardy that adolescent girls experience. They live at that perilous intersection of two key sources of inequality in society, age and gender. They are young 
and thus wield less power than adults. They are female, which gives them less control than males over their own destinies. As a result, for many girls, adolescence, which should be a time filled with promise, is in fact a time filled with peril. As a global community, equipping adolescent girls with the tools and the strategies to reduce the risk of HIV is both a moral obligation and a pragmatic strategy to achieve an AIDS-free generation. A business-as-usual approach won't achieve the results we need. The modeling work I mentioned a moment ago shows that if we combine the high-impact program activities outlined in the HIV investment framework with strategies that enable girls to access those interventions and investments in girls' overall development, we can reduce the number of HIV infections in adolescents by more than 50% by 2015. We must invest in creativity and innovation to reach the hardest to reach adolescent girls. We can strengthen the returns on our investments in prevention by harnessing communication channels that have captured the imagination of adolescents the world over. Mobile technology, social media, and other new forms of communication offer enormous potential to reduce the risk of social isolation by connecting adolescent girls and adults in a virtual community of support. We must engage adolescent girls and boys as partners, leveraging their potential and making them a visible part of the solution. Adolescent girls are innovators and active agents of change, often out of necessity. Their seemingly boundless energy and creativity are fueled by an insatiable curiosity and a keen desire to make a mark on society. These characteristics make adolescents refreshingly receptive to new ideas and behaviors that can be harnessed for social change. Yet, adolescent girls are often the last to be consulted on social issues that affect them. As activists and community workers, we need to remind ourselves that adolescent girls are experts in their own reality and represent a vast repository of untapped potential. We must facilitate their transition into adulthood by equipping them with the knowledge to make healthy decisions and the self-confidence to act on those decisions. There is a large trade, uh, trade agenda that the Obama administration says it has. Perhaps the most contentious portion of that is, in fact, this intellectual property provisions. As we've seen, in fact, they have deadlocked and failed to actually move forward on intellectual property provisions, in large part because countries are pushing back against demands that they implement policies that they know would raise the price of medicines in their countries. They would like to bar patients from being able to challenge patents before they're granted, and they would like to change the scope of patentability to make tiny little changes eligible for 20-year new patents. This is an outrageous statement. This is, in fact, why thousands of people marched to, Oba to uh, Ambassador Kirk's office yesterday demanding that it stop. We think that there's not been the kind of policy dialogue within the administration about you can't have it both ways. You can't let this industry reap monopoly profits, particularly in middle-income countries, but even in lower-income countries as well, and hope to make the dramatic impact on global health that the administration is promising. HIV AIDS certainly, but it's other areas as well, maternal and child health neglected disease, chronic disease, all of these are part of the future of U.S. global health policy, and every one of those initiatives will be undermined by an intellectual property regime which makes it hard for cheaper, affordable, good quality generic medicines to be made available to the vast number of poor people in developing countries who cannot un afford big pharma's prices. U.S. government trade policies are completely disconnected from U.S. Uh, government uh, health policies, and, and there seems to be um, a complete lack of evidence, and I will say as a lawyer, even a legal knowledge on the legal tools that developing countries and developed countries have to promote public health um, in, in situations as important as the one that is bringing here today uh, the International AIDS Conference of basically the fight against HIV AIDS. The global epidemiology of HIV among men who have sex with men is a consistent pattern in developed and developing countries, in low and middle income countries, and in wealthy countries of expanding HIV epidemics among these men. If we are to meet the promise 
of the moment that we're in. Not only do we have to have good science as we've developed over these past, uh, as we're seeing um, reported here at this meeting, but we also have to marry that science with good social justice with a commitment to social justice and with progress in social justice. That is the only way that we will get better equity and access to health care. That is the only way that we will be able to strengthen organizations um, around the globe to be able to respond to this epidemic. And it is the only way that we will be able to end the discrimination and violence and needless deaths that are occurring worldwide among gay men and transgender women bigger problem across the globe is that most global south countries are reluctant or resistant to funding MSM programs and provide minimal or no investment of their own funds in MSM programs. Exacerbating the problem is uncertainty about universal treatment access as global funders undergo transition periods and shamefully shy away from their commitments to AIDS. We call on the World Bank to rejoin the, the uh, global fight against AIDS and to use its expertise and leverage on countries to encourage and ensure that they start investing now in MSM programs in order to avi uh, avoid an ever-expanding treatment costs in the medium and longer term if they do not do that. HIV as a, a point to organize around was not visible because people the community was very um, fragile and people were hiding just because it was a survival thing. So um, it takes people to come out, it takes people to, to, to know that there is a problem and that is, that is what uh, the international community can do to help, to help them understand that there is a problem, to, to help them organize around that problem, for example about HIV, around human rights issues.